Good morning to everyone that is seated here and to all those that are joining us on Zoom. What a beautiful day with sunshine. This morning we celebrate God's divine order. We see that divine order in all of creation as well as in all the circumstances of our lives. For our call to worship, please rise and open your hymnals to page 221. It's a special day. a special day. Today's daily word is divine order. And we ask Lucille Verzi to come up and read today's daily word. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Good morning. divine order. I see divine order expressing everywhere. 
I delight in the glorious colors, fragrances, and arrangement of plants in a garden. I celebrate the imagination, the meticulous planning, and the diligent work that transformed a patch of ground, some seeds, water, and fertilizer into a beautiful, life-filled place. I recognize the role of divine order in the creation of this garden, expressing through everyone who worked it to bring it into being. It began as an idea in divine mind. Someone received the idea. Cooperating minds developed a plan. Willing hands prepared soil, planted seeds, then watered and tended the growing plants. My spiritual vision perceives divine order, the eternal dance of mind, idea, and manifestation expressing everywhere. And from Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thank you. Thank you, Lucille. So today's word talks about divine order in all of creation. When I thought about God's amazing creative process and how every organism plays an essential part in its environment, I couldn't help but think about all the many processes that God put in place over time to make this a planet that could sustain life and human beings. And I can't help but think about a course I took in embryology. Uh, when I think about divine order, that is such an amazing process. Embryology, of course, is the development of the baby, the fetus, in the womb. So Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14 says, For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So I thought about that process. You know that after the egg and the sperm unite and you form a combined cell, that cell grows into a ball of a, hundred, a couple of hundred cells. And each of those cells are the same in function. You, if you take the, that tiny little ball at the eight cell stage and you separate those cells, each one of those cells would become a complete human being. That's a pretty amazing thought, isn't it? And yet all hundreds of those cells in that little ball that you were at the very beginning, they're all the same. You can't tell which one's going to become a foot, which one's going to become a leg, which one's going to become any part of you. So there's, the other interesting is, thing is that there's no top and no bottom. So maybe at one time, your ears were connected to your toes. We don't really know. So what happens to that ball of cells? Suddenly, when there's a certain number of cells in that ball of cells, some of the cells from the middle go to the outside. And there's a signal 
because there's that many number of cells in that ball for those cells on the inside to go to the outside. And now you've got two layers to that ball of cells. And it's only after those two layers for, form that the layer in the middle forms. Because you know we're made out of three germ cell layers. It's pretty amazing. So no step uh, goes on before the previous step is completed. Talk about order. And if something goes wrong at some point, and, the, and, and one step does not finish, and the uh, next step can't begin, very often that means that that embryo will not sustain life, and you can have a miscarriage. So let's look at all of these steps working together. So now we have a three-cell layer, a three-layered cell ball. And when that step is completed, all of a sudden that ball begins to elongate into an oval. Now we have this oval-shaped mass. And all of a sudden, we get a top and a bottom. Axes begin to form. Before that, we were bottomless and topless and everything else, just a ball of cells. Now it elongates, and on one side of that oval, all of a sudden these grooves form on both sides to form a primitive nervous system. So that's the first thing that happens. Do you know how many signals are given off by cells? in order for this process to happen, it's an absolutely amazing process. So, as I said before, every step of this multi-step process must reach its completion before the next step happens. And it takes nine months in order to finish that whole human baby so that every system is developed, the hands are in the right place. I bet you never thought about your hands. Everybody go like this. Go like this in front of me. And look at your hands. Do you realize that they are in a perfect mirror image? You never think about that. We have a top an anterior side to our hands, and if you turn them over, there's a, a ventral side that has the palm of your hands have a totally different look than the, than the top of your hands. Now, when you go like this, you notice that your thumbs are pointing are closest to your body, right? That's not an accident. Oh, I'm sorry. I got carried away. I'm so sorry. Sorry for those of you on Zoom. So the thumbs are pointing towards your body. That's no accident. <laughs> the pinkies are the most distal or far away from your body. And when, it, when you're being developed, there's nothing but this bud over here that sends out signals in all these different directions. And they're perfect. Think about that. The next time you use your hands, all the planning that went into that, all the signaling from other cells. And when you first form your hands, there's a web between them, like ducks, web feet. Did you know that? There's an actual web between your fingers. And then another process, which is still active now, called apoptosis, actually eats those extra cells in there eats them up so that your fingers become free. Amazing, isn't it? It's really an amazing process. So I want to read Psalm 139 again. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. 
because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So what was your part or our part in the developmental process? We contributed two cells, right? A sperm and an egg. And then the female ate healthy, nutritious food and waited for nine months for that child to be born. Did we control the genes that will come together from both the sperm and the egg? No. Did we determine the gender? <coughs> no. And yet, we were co-creators with God in the formation of this baby. So in the case of the development of a baby, you trusted God completely for the end result. Now think, if only we could do the same thing with some of our insurmountable circumstances that arise in life. If we could just trust in God's divine order, knowing that God has our best in mind at all times. Psalm 37, 23 to 24 says, Our steps are made firm by the Lord. When he delights in our way, though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. Trust in that God. Philippians 1, 6 says, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it in you. Trust in that God. Romans 8.32 says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Trust in the divine order of that God. Let us now turn in our bulletins to the affirmation, that's okay, <laughs> and repeat together, I see divine order expressing everywhere. Let's say that again. I see divine order expressing everywhere. And now remain seated and turn to your hymnals to page 251, which is flow, spirit, flow.
Join me now in the prayer of affirmation. Take a slow, deep breath. Inhaling all the goodness of a magnificent God. Exhale slowly, getting rid of all anxiety and burdens that so easily overpower us. Take another deep breath, inhaling slowly, exhaling slowly. Relax your body, getting rid of all tensions. Go to that sacred space inside where you meet God. God of perfect order, God of wholeness and compassion. How magnificent that you have given us a glimpse of how you created the world and all that is living. A glimpse of your divine order. We can only be in awe. Help us to feel that same awe when we trust you with the circumstances of our lives, even those that seem overwhelming. Help us to trust you with every detail of our lives, knowing that your perfect timing and order will always be for our best good because you who have begun a good work in us will be faithful to complete it in us. And so it is. Amen. And now please stand for him number seven God will take care of you
and he will. And now turn to one another and greet each other with the words, I trust in his divine order. I trust in his divine order. I trust. Great morning. morning. Happy Easter. (laughs) What a difference a week makes. I know my faithful. (laughs) Good to see you all. I'm looking forward to this day because as you can see, our our children are going to present to us a 12 power uh, ceremony, lighting of the candles. It's always special when our kids share with us. You can see their uh, innocence, their purity, their wholeness. And we hope that they hold on to that, right? So I hope you had a great week. And the weeks go by so fast, the days go by. Every night we go to sleep, I say, Sarah, zoom, zoom the days go by so quick and we just have to be thankful for the eternal life of God that we all share so just take a breath in that and relax your body temples and your mind into the presence and power of God there's no need to rush here or there everything we need is provided We trust completely in that one power, as Bridget shared with us. And as Lucille shared, everything is flowing in divine order. When we rest and trust in thee. Embrace that silence. Embrace the stillness. For that stillness is the calm peace within our hearts, always with us, always calling forth. And from this place, I ask that we sing out the truth as taught to us by Jesus Christ.
quietly, inwardly. I turn myself within. I look within the one power and one presence within me. God the good, omnipotent. Quietly, inwardly, turn within, turn within to the perfect peace of God. And as we turn within, take a breath. Fill up your body temple with God's everlasting love. Fill up your temple to overflowing. Fill it. Watch your stomach rise as you take a breath. Like a beautiful baby. Your stomach rises and then recedes. And which eat with each breath we take, we are filled with perfect love. And with each breath we express, we share that love with this world. For this world is made and sustained by the love of God. This world and you and I are made in the image and likeness of our Father, Mother, God. Your life is a miracle. Your life is an extension of God. For we are never separate and apart from that power, that presence, which created each one of us. For God declared, I am with you always until the end of time. For God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And his life and love are everlasting. Thank you, God, for this life. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to express you in all my thoughts, words and actions. For in doing so, I will know you. I will feel you. I will be you. The perfect expression. And in this perfect peace, we see our prayer chest coming forward. And we bless our prayer chest with the peace of God. Knowing that before we even ask, all our prayers have been answered. All our desires have been met. For it is God's only desire for us to experience his happiness, his oneness. For our happiness is his happiness. For we are one, one and the same. So as we give to each other in prayer and meditation, 
We give to ourselves and we give to God. So what will we give today is up to us. God only asks us to give as he has given to us. Give and you will receive. Give until you can give no more. For as we give to each other, we only give to ourselves. For we are one in Christ. So this morning, this precious morning, we give thanks and praise that we are able to give so that we may be a blessing unto this world as God has blessed us. Let us not forget this precious day we walk with, we breathe with, and he lives and breathes in and through us in every moment of the day. We just need to be still. Be still. And give thanks and praise to the one power, the one presence, God the Creator, omnipotent. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this new day, a new beginning. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Bridget. And thank you, Lucille. Bridget forgot to tell us that the first organ that's made from all those cells is our heart. And the heart which sustains us for the rest of our life. The heart which holds that perfect love that unconditional love, which we'll learn about today as the children come out and share the 12 powers. As we learned about in our 12 power class, that within this body temple are all those powers. But most importantly, those powers are our consciousness. As we hold in mind, they express in and through our bodies. And our body is really neutral. It's just there to reflect back if we're in divine order. If our bodies are out of order, we should say thank you for that little nudge that I need to turn to you. Jesus always turned to God. And in the stillness, the spirit told him what to do, when to do, what needs to be done. As we get the 12 powers from our Sunday school teachers. <laughs> we forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I hope you take these 12 powers home with you. And commit them to memory. We got one more? We have two. All right. You can bring them in later. <laughs> there goes the light. <laughs> so I thank you again. Thank you for joining us on Zoom. It's a beautiful day, a, a precious day. And I promise you we'll have plenty of sweet things in the activity center after this. But it brings us to our lesson. And our lesson is entitled... As within, so without. And you might have heard that, as within, so without, as above, so below. But it comes to us from Luke 17, verse 20 through 21, where the Pharisees said to Jesus, when will the kingdom come? And Jesus said to, to them, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible sounds, signs, 
You won't be able to say, here it is, lo, there it is, for the kingdom of God is already among you. The kingdom of God is within you. For Jesus declared in John 14, verse 1, Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. For there's more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way where I am going. Where, when everything is ready, I will come and get you. In this world, in our collective consciousness, we believe that the kingdom of God is someplace outside of us, someplace that we go after death. But how does that make any sense after last Easter Sunday when we declared Jesus has risen and everlasting life is within us? There's no such thing as death. We sung out last Sunday, Alleluia, Jesus has risen and there's no such thing as death. You see, the kingdom is within us. The kingdom is in the here and now. It is not out there or up there, but it is within us. And Jesus always reminded us several times to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all things will be added unto it. And I will come and get you when everything is ready. Last Sunday, our home was ready for dinner on Easter Sunday. We invited friends and family, and Sarah made sure that the house was clean, the food, the meal was ready, the beverages, the dessert, and the doors were open. We were ready to entertain company, and we were prepared to welcome our guests. As they say in Spanish, mi casa, su casa. And when people come to our house, we hope that they're welcome and comfortable. Like many homes, we have many of those blankets, you know, those little throws. And everybody gets a throw. And they get comfortable on the, on the couch or wherever they are. But that's because they feel comfortable in our home. So the question is this morning is, is your house ready for Jesus? Do you even have room in your house for Jesus? The revealing word tells us that the house of God is that God builds dwells in our body. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19, know ye not that your body is a temple, a house of God. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, he wrote, For we are a temple of the living God. Our bodies, our conscious, our body, our consciousness is a house of the living God, a house of the Holy Spirit. And there's enough room in my father's home, or I would not have told you so. He didn't say our father's house, houses like we buy in, on the boardwalk, we buy several houses. We all live in the same house, and within that house are many rooms. And I, as I look out in here, I see many rooms. The many rooms is our consciousness, where we have to clean, keep that consciousness clean of all our error thoughts. Just like when you were little, and your parents might have scolded you, and they say, go to your room and clean your room. And what, you, what did you do? You probably went in there and made a, a bigger mess <laughs> or got aggravated at your parents. Or you cleaned your room or else you were going to get a licking. <laughs> but in your, our father's home are many rooms. 
And there's enough room for all of us if we just prepare our house, our rooms, for the coming of the Christ. I know Bridget will know this person, Neil deGrasse, deGrasse Tyson. I think most of us know of him. He studied at many colleges, universities. He studied at Harvard and University of Texas and, and Columbia. A very smart man. And I heard him talk about doing a study not so long ago. He did a study about who believes in God. And the people with the less education, they had the greatest percentage of believing in God. And as people got more and more educated, they had less and less of a belief in God. And he said, even those with doctorates and, and high degrees, only 1% of them believed in God. And he was excited because he wanted to know what that 1% knew. What I believe is, as we fill our minds with more and more stuff, there's less and less room for God. And we fill our, our minds with stuff over and over again. We fill our minds with stuff from this beautiful contraption. And we wonder why we get addicted to it because when we get surfing or sliding or whatever you want to call it, we're being fed dopamine. And we keep going back to the fix for more dopamine and the other adrenaline thing. What is that? Hundreds of them. <laughs> Serotonin. Serotonin, thank you. But that's what we're getting at from our phones, dopamine and serotonin. And you wonder why you keep reaching back to the phone. And you think that all those beautiful life, lives you see on Instagram is what your life should be. And when it doesn't meet that, when it doesn't meet that, how do you feel? It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So Neil deGrasse points out to us, the more we know, the less we know. And the, and the astronauts are similar. You know Buzz Aldrin? He went to the moon three times, I believe. And when it was all finished, he was overcome with anxiety and depression because he felt he had gone and done everything that there was possible to do. And I've heard many astronauts get filled with depression and anxiety when the mission is over because there's nothing more for them to look forward to. And they forget that they have to make that journey within. They know so much and they know so little. I have a good friend of mine, probably one of the smartest persons I know. He's a licensed, licensed electrician, a licensed plumber. <coughs> he can take your car apart and put it back together. In his early days, he was working for a plumber doing, uh, putting in new boilers and things like that. He did work on my house, plumbing, electric. And after the plumbing, then he went to work on helicopters. And he was there for several years. And then he moved into aeronautics, worked for Aer Lingus, British Airways, worked on the, the Concorde 747. He could do anything. He could do anything. And then after 40 plus years, he retired. And after those 40 years, he shared with me that he felt depression. He felt anxiety because he didn't know what to do with himself. He was lost within himself. He knew so much, yet he knew so little. And so I call him and I encourage him to go for walks. And he does. He goes for walks. And he finds time in his walks where he, 
he gets connected to the presence and power of God. We're so busy in our lives doing what we do that we forget what is essential in life, the presence and power of God. And it's a reflection of what we have here today. I'm so happy that each and every one of you came back. But last Sunday, this place was pretty full. And now we're back to normal one week later. We're probably at Costco or wherever we are because we have to get that big pile of toilet paper. <laughs> you see, we spend so, so much time concerned with the outer that we forget that first and foremost we have to take care of the inner. And as Jesus said, we can't serve one God when we're serving a split mind. A mind that's focused on all the outer and forgets about the perfection within us. So this morning, our children are going to share with us the 12 powers of man. I would like to call it the 12 powers of the living God within you and I. Those powers we, we know are faith, strength, judgment, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, elimination, and life. If God is all, and if all these powers are us, then why is there so much suffering in the world? Try explaining that to your child when they sit there and watch the news with you, or they come home from school and, and they hear about another shooting. Why is there so much suffering in this world when God is all good, all knowing, everywhere present? We have to ask ourselves, and we have to be able to explain that to a small child, a small child in kindergarten. Just picture yourself explaining that to a small child in kindergarten. And what will you tell them? Because if you can't explain it to them, then you really can't explain it to yourself. And what did they call kindergarten? It came, it came from the German word, kinder garden, right? So how do you explain all the stuff in this world to an innocent, loving, pure child of God? Maybe you can start with an orange. You can hold an orange in front of them. And when you take that orange and you cut it in half and you put it on the little juicer at, in the kitchen, what do you expect to get out from that orange? Orange juice. And when you hug that little child, what do you expect to get from that little child? Love. Unconditional love. But as that little child grows and develops, they become saturated with all the things in the outer and they start to develop anxiety, fear, limitations. I can't do this because no one else has done it. They, they forget about their imagination that they embraced so innocently when they were young. Remember when we played with matchboxes and we We'd be the fireman, the doctor, the policeman. We'd be everything. We've lost that imagination that we had as a kid. And then as we grow up, if we squeeze each other, what do we get? If you're lucky to squeeze each other. I give my son 10 second, 10 second hugs. Heart to heart hugs. And what I get is a rock. I get love, but try doing that with a coworker. Try doing that with that relative that you haven't spoken with in a while. You get the picture? In this world, you can tell the child, in this world, there's so many trials and tribulations because we have forgotten and we've reversed our thinking 
instead of getting all our thoughts from the Holy Spirit and entering those in with our consciousness, we've allowed our five senses to pull everything in and we believe it to be true. Every time we watch TV, every time we see something in the newspaper, we believe it to be true. And every time we put more and more stuff in our house and we're not ready for it to receive the coming of the Holy Spirit. If you remember a couple months back, Bridget had to spend 10 days in the silence until she got a glimpse of that spirit. Many years ago, I spent, and we spent, three days on a weekend retreat. And it wasn't until I was woken up by the spirit that I got a glimpse of what God is. So we can run out of here and go through the double doors and return to life as normal. Or we can spend a little more time here. We can spend time in fellowship. And we can talk about how our prayers are being answered. We can talk about revelations that are coming to us. You see, this world, we think if we keep on doing what we've always been doing, we'll get different results. If I keep going to work, I keep getting on the train, I keep working till 11 o'clock on my computer, I'm going to get the same old. I'm going to get farther and farther away from the presence and power of God. See, there's so much suffering in here that we can't even recognize the good in front of us. If you really look at the good over years, there's less people starving now than ever before. We have more stuff in our house than ever before. We have more creature comforts than ever before. But what we have more than ever is anxiety and depression because we have so much stuff that we forget. We know much. We put all, all our energy into our cars, our 75-inch TVs, and we get lost. Just think on it. So tell that to your little child when they ask you for a cell phone. All the other kids have cell phones. Can I have it? Maybe give them a flip phone <laughs> so you can stay in contact with them. But I don't know, when I was little, I stayed in contact with all my friends because I would get on my bicycle and I would ride a mile to their house or I'd get on that little phone in the kitchen with the lone cord and I'd call them up and I'd say, I'm coming over. And my parents never asked when I came back for dinner, where were you? They never worried about me. They never asked, how was your day? Do we ask that from our kids? Do we let them speak what's on their mind? And do we sit down with them at the end of dinner so that we can share the word, that we can speak the word to them we can sit down and read the simple truth with them. I know if you didn't brush your, your teeth for two days, and if you didn't take a bath for two days, we would all know it. Everybody would be moving away from you. But we also know if you don't think about God for two days, because you'll come in here not in divine order. You'll come in here with depression and anxiety and worries and you want us to join you in your little pity party because work isn't going right. My health is not going right. And we're here to give you compassion, but we're also here to lift you up and to show you a better way. So I just encourage us to think on that. How are we going to explain this to our little kids, all the trials and tribulations, if we don't take time for the spirit and God within us. Sarah and I were talking about getting our kids to come to church. 
And when we were younger, it wasn't a choice. You came to church. Just like you brushed your teeth and you took a bath, you came to church. And we have to see the importance of church. If you don't come here, then maybe you can Zoom. Or maybe you can do the replay with your kids. And you can talk about what the lesson was and what, what it means to them. Because I know plenty of people who grew up in my faith were filled with fear. And we don't want to fill our children with fear. We don't want to fill our children with thoughts of a God separate from us. We want to fill them with love. So today is an important lesson. As within, so without. And we have to reverse it. Reverse what we've always been doing. As without, so within. And we have to take time for prayer and meditation in the morning, the evening, and all through the day so that we may prepare our home for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And then when we get that, that knowingness, we can share it with our children. We can share it with our spouse. We can share it with each and every one we greet this day. For it says in Revelations, Revelation says, or let me start with Isaiah, Thou will keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on thee and when you trusted thee with all your might. And as it says in Revelations 21, verses 3 through 4, I heard a loud shout, shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain, as these things are gone forever. So as within, so without, and so it is. Amen. So instead of singing our song right now, I'd like to invite the kids in, because they're anxious to, to share with us so, can they hear me? Come on down. <laughs> Willie's going to get him. Thank you, Willie. Just doing the Lord's work. <laughs> but we'll sing that hymn for sure another time. <laughs>
This scandal is lit for the disciple Peter, who represents faith. Let us affirm together, through the Christ spirit within me, my faith blesses my day and paves my way. I claim my power of faith. This candle is lit for the disciple John, who represents love. Let us affirm together. Through the Christ's love within me, I am now filled with peace and harmony. I attract good and love into my life. I claim my power of love now. Strength. This candle is lit for the disciple Andrew who represents strength. Let us affirm together. Through the Christ mind within me, I am made strong. I have the fortitude to overcome all things. I claim my power of strength. Wisdom or good judgment. This candle is lit for the disciple James, the son of Zebedee, who represents wisdom or good judgment. Let us affirm together. Through the Christ mind within me, I make wise choices. Divine justice is established in my life. I claim my power of wisdom now. This candle is lit for the disciple Philip, who represents generative power. Let us affirm together. There is no power but God. Through his power, I choose to be meticulous with my words and actions, and I go forth to spread only goodness to this earth. This candle is lit for the disciple Bartholomew, who represents imagination. So let us affirm together. By the imaging power of the indwelling Christ, I see the good in every person and every situation. I give form and shape to divine ideas. I claim my power of imagination now. Understanding. This candle is lit for the disciple Thomas, who presents understanding. Let's affirm together. Through the light of the Christ within, I understand the truth about myself and others. I'm a child of God, loved and worthy. I claim my power of understanding with my will.
Will. This candle is lit for the disciple Matthew, who represents Will. Let us affirm together. The Christ guides my will. I let God's perfect will be done in all that I think, say, and do. I choose and lead based on divine ideas. I claim my power of will now. Order, this candle is lit for the disciple James, the son of Alphaeus, who represents order. Let us affirm together, the indwelling Christ establishes order in my life now. All things are working for God. I organize and balance my life according to divine ideas. I claim my power of order now. This candle is lit for the disciple Simon, the Canaanite who represents zeal. Let us affirm together. Christ is the moving power within me. I am filled with the Christ power of zeal. I am passionate and enthusiastic about divine ideas. I claim my power of zeal now. This candle is lit for the disciple Thaddeus, who represents elimination or letting go. Let us affirm together. Through the power of Christ within, I am cleansed and forgiven. I now let go of all unchristlike thoughts and feelings. I make room for God's good to fill my life. I pay my power of elimination now. This candle is lit for the disciple Judas, who represents life. Let us affirm together. The indwelling Christ guides and governs my life within me. I am energized, renewed, and restored. I vitalize and energize all that I think and do based on divine ideas. I claim my power of life. Now, we say thank you, kids. We hope you take these home with you and you can understand them and embody them because the power of God is within us. And as we learned this, this morning, it's as within, so without. And I'm sure your parents will help you understand that even more. <laughs> so, now let us... Uh, it's a time of offering, so if you have something to give to this church, and our church is a state of consciousness, so I ask that you hold your love offerings upon your heart, and together we can affirm, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, 
all that I give and all that I receive. Good afternoon. Um, before I start the announcements, um, I actually wanted to play a few notes for the group that's going to Unity Village for some added enthusiasm. <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> um, um, actually, I just wanted to take that as an introduction because um, it's actually coming up sooner than you realize after all our planning for many months and the preparation and the flights that have been changed and whatever. Um, so that I have notified um, early, uh, a few days ago, earlier in the week, um, the shuttle service that was set up according to vans, etc. If you either didn't get it or if there's any confusion, please feel free to contact me. Uh, and also the van, Christy at the van service is very, very easy um, to talk with and she said call, whatever. But anyway, you can contact me if you A couple people already have. Um, but it should be interesting. Linda also shared some, excuse me, some um, information about what's um, the topics and what they do, they're going to actually do yoga out there, but they're doing, um, I think it's going to be really interesting. So there's a few of you that have helped me get enthusiastic. That's why I had to play the song. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, April 8th to May 11th is the next online prayer chaplain, sorry, training workshop. For more information, um, we have the information and the, and the um, contact in the bulletin. Sunday, April 14th at 11 a.m., that's next week. Reverend Juan Toro will be our guest speaker, and his lesson is titled At the Crossroads. Saturday, April 27th, 10 a.m. on Zoom. Um, Emily, we're going to start Emily Cady, ch read chapters one and two, How I Use Truth. ID and passcode again are on the bulletin. Thursday, May 9th at 11 a.m. on Zoom, the book discussion group is meeting with the next selection, The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. There's a um, typo in there. Um, and, I, and then I just wanted to read um, Outreach um, sent out baskets very caringly and lovingly to a few of the congregants. Um, and Edna wrote back, Dear Unity Outreach, I am abundantly blessed and very grateful for all that you do for me and other members of our church. God bless you all. In gratitude, Edna. And I think that's it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Ellen. And I think Reverend Pat sends the exact same feelings. Gratitude and thanks for the uh, gift basket and the Easter lily and, and Barbara too, Barbara Johnson. Right. And um, just one little note. Uh, we all know uh, Frank Chapizzi, Ann and Frank Chapizzi. So Frank is in hospice care right now. So uh, we just want to hold Frank and Ann in our prayers and, and see that, uh, you know, he was just here a couple weeks, so it's, it is of a shock. But uh, when it's time, it's time. and. His time is near, but uh, we want to bless the family. We want to bless Anne, and we want to bless Frank and all the children that they are strong in the Lord, that they know that power and presence is always with them, and that Frank's love will never leave them, will never leave us, and we are all one in God. So hold them in your prayers this week, but joyfully joyfully give thanks for that that person we all love frank and uh Anne and all is well amen thank you and with that said willie's saying anybody here new for the first time anybody new i don't think so thank you willie
And now let us stand and close out this service by blessing our love offerings, followed by the prayer of protection. A peace song. We say thank you, thank you for your time, your talents, and your treasures. For we know that this ministry is built and sustained by your love. But most of all, we say thank you, God. For we know all good things come from God. And we are grateful eternally. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing the peace song, followed by the prayer of protection. <laughs> the truth of our being. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. For the presence of God watches over us. For I am presence. For wherever we are, God is and all is well. For I am divine. And as we leave this place, what comes to my mind is a former Sunday school teacher. And her expression was, boy, am I enthusiastic. <laughs> so I invite you to leave this place with zeal and all your powers and give a hug and get a hug. And so it is. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.